Hi everyone, this is Don Grimm. In this video, I'll describe the differences between accident year and calendar year. We'll use a loss triangle like this one to calculate various accident year and calendar year metrics. Let's get started. Accident year and calendar year are the two most common ways of organizing loss data. An accident year is any 12 month period in which accidents occur. Keeping within the context of losses, a calendar year reflects amounts that are paid or incurred during a 12 month calendar period. The calendar year concept can be generalized to include premiums and many other insurance metrics. However, in this video, we're going to focus on the definition as it relates to paid and incurred loss. These concepts are best understood by example. We're going to use this cumulative paid loss triangle to illustrate each term. We're going to begin with a quick refresher course on loss triangles. The triangle format is simply a useful way to organize claims data. In this example, paid losses are organized by accident year. Changes in cumulative paid losses by accident year are presented from left to right at 12 month intervals called ages. As an example, let's look at accident year 2020. Any amount in this row relates to claims with accident dates sometime in 2020. So for example, accident year 2020 evaluated 12 months after the beginning of the accident year equals $90,000. Another way to say this is that cumulative paid loss for accident year 2020 evaluated as of 12-31-2020 $20, equals $90,000. Observe that the cumulative paid loss for accident year 2020 changes over time. That is, as we move from left to right in the triangle. Accident year 2020 evaluated 24 months after the beginning of the accident year on 12-31-2021 equals $225,000. The fact that amounts change over time is a key characteristic of an accident year. In the context of losses, this change is called loss development. As we'll see later, calendar year measures of losses are not subject to change over time. Okay, we're nearly ready to use this paid loss triangle to calculate and compare accident year and calendar year losses. But first, I wanna bring your attention to the paid loss data aligned along the diagonal of the triangle. The amounts along the rightmost diagonal share one thing in common. They're all evaluated at the same point in time. In this example, the evaluation date is 12-31-2022. We refer to this data as the 12-31-2022 evaluation or the 12-31-2022 diagonal. Similarly, the preceding diagonal represents cumulative paid loss evaluated as of 12-31-2021. Let's use this information to calculate paid loss for calendar year 2022. Calendar year 2022 is made up of payments from multiple accident years. For example, as of 12-31-2022, there was $100,000 of paid loss related to accident year 2022. Of course, there was no loss for this accident year prior to the beginning of 2022 so the portion of accident year 2022 losses paid in calendar year 2022 is the full $100,000. Now let's look at accident year 2021. We can see that paid loss for this accident year increased from 110,000 at the end of 2021 to 275,000 at the end of 2022. So the difference of 165,000 was paid in calendar year 2022. Similarly, during calendar year 2022, accident year 2020 increased by 113,000 from 225,000 to 338,000. Finally, accident year 2019 increased by 87,000 from 435,000 to 522,000. In total, Paid loss for calendar year 2022 equals 465,000. In summary, calendar year 2022 paid loss 
equals the cumulative loss paid through 1231-2022 less the cumulative loss paid through 1231-2021. Now let's look at the cumulative paid loss for accident year 2022. Since the value of an accident year changes over time, we need to specify the evaluation date, which we have selected here as 1231-2022. This amount simply equals the $100,000 cumulative paid loss at age 12, that is, as of 1231-2022. Remember that the value for an accident year is a function of time, whereas the calendar year amount, once determined, is fixed. In the next slide, we'll extend this example to reinforce what we've learned here. In this part of the example, we're going to advance the clock to year-end 2023. This means another diagonal of paid loss data is available, as well as accident year 2023. Notice that the only change to the triangle is the addition of the last diagonal, which is evaluated as of 1231-2023. This is consistent with the fact that the paid loss we calculated for calendar year 2022 is also unchanged. Next, let's quickly calculate the paid loss for calendar year 2023. This amount can be obtained by calculating the difference between successive diagonals. In other words, cumulative paid loss as of year end 2023 less cumulative paid loss as of year end 2022. Let's perform this calculation by accident year, starting with accident year 2023. First, we take the 95,000 for accident year 2023, and we add the difference between the latest two evaluations for accident year 2022, which equals 150,000. Then we add the differences between the last two evaluations for each of the earlier accident years. In total, we see that there was 502,000 of paid loss in calendar year 2023. Let's look at another way to calculate calendar year 2023 paid loss. First, we're going to calculate the sum of the amounts along the 1231-2023 diagonal. In total, we see that cumulative paid loss as of 1231-2023 across all accident years equals 1,737,000. Similarly, cumulative paid loss as of 1231-2022 is the sum of the 1231-2022 diagonal. We can see this equals 1,235,000. We can calculate calendar year 2023 paid loss is the difference between these two amounts. This equals 502,000, which of course is the same amount that we calculated earlier. The important thing here is to recognize that the accident year detail is not necessary to calculate calendar year totals. The accident year detail may be informative, but depending on the application, it may not be necessary. Before we end, let's revisit cumulative paid loss for accident year 2022. Remember that accident year amounts are subject to change over time, so we need to specify the evaluation date. As of 1231-2022, cumulative paid loss for accident year 2022 is equal to the value we calculated previously, which can be obtained directly from the triangle in the row for accident year 2022. How about accident year 2022 as of 1231-2023? This represents the cumulative paid loss for accident year 2022 as of 1231-2023 and can also be obtained from the triangle. And that's all there is to it. I hope you now have a better understanding between accident year and calendar year. One last note, even though we used paid loss throughout this discussion, we could have used incurred loss and the principles are all the same. Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.